So I'm grabbing some more white here, more white, a little more of this rose here, and uh, put a little more white in there. Get the rear end of the cat here. You know, like I say, they look like like bloomers. I used to call my little Himalayan Miss Puff pants because that's what they looked like she was wearing, little pantaloons. Did you start out painting your cats with life? And then no, no, no. I mean, I could do, no, it's like I, if I do a portrait, I usually do it from a photograph. It's a pretty straightforward thing. No, I first started doing it just as an idea in painting class. We had to do a study, we had to do a painting that involved texture. And I had this really mean tortoise shell, long haired, like a Norwegian forest cat, who was just really nasty. So I did a painting of her with this real go to hell look on her face. The ears flattened out like that, you know, and just a glare on the face, you know. The total opposite of the little cute little beatific kittens that you usually see. You know, because this was the cat I know. It's the old artist adage, I paint what I see, you know. And I put her on top of like a, a, a Greek column and then I threw in just some other modern art non sequiturs and that's how these paintings got started. I was doing it mainly to make fun of the modern artists that I had to put up in, in, in my university. But the joke, the joke kind of backfired though because people started buying. And, uh, so, um, so now we've got, we're, we're putting in our thing here, our cat, and, uh, and we're getting some nice blending of the white with all the colors underneath. So I'm just letting that create the furs. I'll probably go, I'll throw in a little more darkness just to get some layers in there. But at this point, I'm practically sculpting. Now, I'm probably making a mistake by doing this because this should, I got the middle of the cat here. I should probably be doing something with that there. Yeah, I probably should do that. Put some fur down there. Because then I got to paint the thing over there. You learn from my mistake. I show you what not to do, yeah? And, uh, This is looking. I'm getting into Happyville here. Happy. What I can probably do is I can go into the background and, and mess with it a little bit so it, the cat separates from it. Sometimes when I'm doing a more complicated painting and I have a whole bunch of uh, paint left over on my canvas, I'll do something like this where I'll just grab a thing and use the paint that's left over on the canvas and very quickly see what I can whip out quickly. And that's always good good practice for uh, days like this. And, uh, fill in some color here. That way I can take my white and blend it in. Just get a little bit more. Ooh, a little too much blue there. Maybe, maybe, maybe. There's nothing that can't be fixed. I'm just trying to make a sh some shadow area, you know, to make to get some definition between the two areas. Of the cat's okay if a little blue gets on there. It keeps it from being too boring. You know, what I can do is I can just throw a toss in a little blue here, and that'll pick it right up. Just a little bit of blue strokes. It's not too solid. It's a little less boring. Sometimes you gotta make those little noises. You tell yourself little stories. How's that fur going? What's the cat doing? What's the cat doing? There we go. Let's see, we need to make this paw a little darker. Now that we've got it established. There we go. Looking good so far. 
It's looking good. Yep. So now we. Uh, uh, so now I need to clean this brush off just a little bit because it's really saturated with paint. And I want to start blending in some white again with it. So I'm going to grab some of this white and it's going to mix with all this other stuff here. I uh, remember this leg we were working on. I want to re, want to refluff it. So where's the middle part of the game? That's why I tend to prefer to paint these things when they're sitting down because then their feet just disappear. There's one last thing I have to worry. See, and as I add more strokes, that blue just becomes a shadow color underneath the, for the furs underneath. That's what we want. That's the only thing I knew when I got up this morning and knew I was going to paint something. I, because I was brooding on it, and all I could think was, well, well, it's going to be a pastel colored cat, you know, just basic bathroom pastels, little girls' room pastels. <laughs> yeah. As it turns out, that's mostly what I happen to have on me as far as paints today, so, <laughs> you know, it works out. There we go. Body to the cat now. I have a friend named Paul Wilson. He's operating the camera today, and uh, he has a, a black little Manx cat in his house that has started many of his videos. And the cat, when he has guests, lives in his bathroom. And so, whenever I'm over there visiting his house, and I want to use the bathroom, the, we say, "Oh, I got to go visit the cat." <laughs> and that's the uh, metaphor for going to the bathroom. You gotta go visit the cat. But the cat doesn't like company or attack cat? Or... Uh, it hasn't attacked me yet, but it doesn't like me. <laughs> that could be really dangerous. But well, no, he keeps the, the well, he, he keeps the he keeps the cat in when he's gonna knows he's gonna have guests because <coughs> otherwise the cat gets naughty, you know. So otherwise the cat moves freely around the house, usually following Paul. Alright, so now I'm at the moment of procrastination because I'm worried if I'm going to screw this up. <laughs> I always still worry about that, especially in something like this.